Hello? Hello? Hello. So, I'm here to tell you the second story, or the part two of my story, which is comprised of many stories. I was driving to the barn and I got a text, and it was one of my students' mothers. She was potentially buying one of my horses, and her and her daughter had gone to the barn, and they were bringing up my horse Cajun to go and brush him, and they said that they had brought him back down because he was freaking out and didn't want to go into the barn. So I got to the barn, and I saw them bringing him back up, and they told me their faces looked very distraught, and they looked... Um, nervous, I guess you would say, or freaked out, and they said that they had seen an apparition in the hayloft. And I started to rationalize. I was thinking maybe it was the owner of the barn, he's a man, or maybe someone had snuck into the hayloft, or maybe there was an animal and a shadow was cast. I had all these ideas of what it was. I'm like, well, I do, I do believe in ghosts. I had seen the ghost adventures, ghost hunters, and some people think it's all fake and that they just do it for the money, which maybe it is, I don't know. Uh, maybe it is all fake. I mean, they don't usually find a lot, but they do find stuff sometimes. Anyway, I had gone upstairs to reset grain, and because the grain hadn't been reset, and the mother had come upstairs, and we were talking, and she said that she was a medium and she says she doesn't normally tell people this because people think she's crazy which is understandable I didn't believe her at first I thought it was kind of a joke and then I decided to ask her I'm like well why don't you tell me about the ghost that's haunting my barn then and so she started to tell me some things and this is not in order this is just what I remember that she told me she said that his name is John he flew in through the window, and I almost started laughing at that. I'm like, oh, this sounds really weird. Um, then he said that he knew the owner of the farm, which I'm just going to call him Jim. That's not his name, but I'm just going to call him Jim. Um, so the owner of the farm, Jim. And he said that he comes and visits the barn because one of his horses died a long time ago there. So this guy, he said that he didn't die at this farm. He died at his house, and then she started to kind of grab her throat and choke a little and had trouble breathing, and she said that he couldn't breathe when he died. And then he went on, or she told me what he looked like, um, that he was kind of scrawny, skinny, um, he had grayish hair, he, I don't know. That's all I can really remember about what he looked like. So, then she went on to say that he's been here for a long time. And she said he was afraid. He was afraid to come out until now. And I just thought, oh my god, that's weird. Like, if he was here for a long time and he saw me and he saw me there all the time and he saw that I was a nice person, why, why would he be afraid of me? Like, it was just, it was weird. But I kind of... I had some thoughts go through my mind, but I kind of just was like, okay. Because at this point, I didn't really, I'm like, eh, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Like, I don't really believe that, I'm like, maybe she's making all this up. I have no idea. I mean, she seems like a nice person, but who knows? So then all of a sudden, I heard a noise outside, and I freaked out. I'm like, oh my god, it's John, the ghost! Um, and then I looked outside, and it was actually the owner of the farm, Jim. <laughs> Uh, so, I'm like, this went into my head, I'm like, perfect opportunity, I can do a confirmation with Jim and see that if she's telling the truth or if this is real. So, I went downstairs and I was like, hey, Jim, um, can I ask you something? And he was like, what? And I said, do you know anyone named John? John, does that ring a bell? And he's like, he looked at me and he he said no, and I was like, John, from a long time ago, John, you're related to him maybe? He's like, no, I'm not related to anyone named John. And then I'm like, John, he had a horse here a long time ago. His horse died on the property, John, you know? <laughs> I 
And then he was like, oh yeah, John. When he said that, and then he described what he looked like, and it, he described just like what the lady had said. So basically, I felt my whole stomach drop. Like that pit of your stomach, you know, when you feel like you might throw up or faint. That's what I had. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What? What? And this was after um, those healings I had, that last story. So I, just, I was a little freaked out. And then I thought, oh my gosh, this is the perfect opportunity for my ex-boyfriend. Because my ex-boyfriend didn't believe in God and he didn't believe in the supernatural. So I'm like, this is the perfect opportunity to... I can ask this lady some questions or show... No, even better. I can just show him her a picture and maybe, maybe she can get something off of him and I can relay the messages to him or information so he can see that the supernatural is real. Because I myself was kind of surprised and I kind of wanted to see for myself. Okay, so I gave a picture from Facebook of my ex-boyfriend to her and she said she never did that before so she wasn't sure if it would work or not or how it would work. So I gave her the picture and she was looking at it and it was just a picture of him, that was it. And she said, I see grease around him and I see the Greek flag. It was funny because not that long before he had bought a shirt with the Greek flag on it, I believe. I might be wrong. I don't really remember. I know he got a shirt, something about Greece, and he is Greek. His dad is from Greece. So I'm like, okay, well, one point. And then she said, I don't remember all the things she said. This is just what I remember, and again, it might not be in order. But she said that he had a brother that died of a drug overdose. And this was weird because before we broke up, it was around the time when we were, we kind of broke up, got together, broke up, got together um, a few times. And I don't remember when exactly, but it was during this time that he said, this is what he said. He said, I don't know why I'm telling you this because I don't tell anyone this, but I had a brother that died of a drug overdose. So this was before talking with the medium. And so it hit me. I'm like, yeah, she's right. So I was like, okay. And then she looked at me and said, his mother is in denial. And I thought, I'm like, I said, and then I thought about some things and I said, what's she in denial about? I asked. Um, the medium and she said I don't know I don't know what she's in denial about maybe she's in denial about her son dying from the drug overdose however my ex-boyfriend also mentioned that it was his half-brother not his mother's son so that wasn't her son so she wasn't in denial over that but I know what she was in denial about because before this happened I had been talking to her on the phone and she had called me a few times and she was asking me why I broke up with my ex-boyfriend and I said it's because um, I'm a Christian he's an atheist and we're trying to make each other change and it's not working out and we thought that we could just live with each other believing what we believed but we found out it was too difficult, too, it was just too hard, and even though we loved each other, it was, it wasn't working. So I told her that, and she said, oh no, no, he's a Christian, he's a Christian, he believes in God, he believe, he has Jesus, and I said, no, he doesn't, he says he's an atheist, he says he doesn't want to believe, and we'd go on and on talking about it, and I just remember um, when we hung up, I said, wow, she's really in denial. So, when the medium said this, I'm like, no, I know what she's in denial about. And then all of a sudden, as soon as I thought that, and I figured it out, she said, three days, three weeks, three months, three days, three weeks, three months, and I was like, what the heck? And she's like, he's going to get hit by a car on the right side. 
And I was like, that's weird. That's weird. Cause, and then it came back to me, like, how whatever that ghost was, John, how he was afraid of me in the barn. And I was like, and this was right after I had accepted Jesus. And then I had thoughts of, like, different things that I heard about demons being afraid of Jesus, being afraid of his name. So I'm like, these thoughts were just going to my head. I'm like, that's weird. That's interesting. And anyway, I just, we stopped talking about it. She said other things. I can't really remember everything she said. But I was going into the tack room or something, and then all of a sudden, she said, Casey, you did a Ouija board last year. And I looked at her, and I was like, how do you know that? Nobody knows that. Nobody knows that. Except for the person that I was with, and that's it. And she said, don't worry, nothing attached to you. But it was evil that came out of that board. And I felt chills going up and down my body because a year ago I did a Ouija board and I knew I shouldn't have done it. And right before I did it I said, God, please protect me. And I said, don't let anything attach to me. Now this is a year later and she said, don't worry, nothing attached to you. And she, I never brought that up. I never told anyone. So I was freaked out. And so I'm just like, okay, alright. Like, and so I went back into the aisle and I started, I had to clean stalls. So I started mucking stalls. And then, I don't know you, I don't know why I said this, but I said, haha, do I have demons all around me? Like being sarcastic or, I don't even know what I was being. It was just, it was weird. It was weird that I even said that. And then she kind of like tuned in on me or whatever. And then her eyes opened wide and she said, Casey, you have a lot around you. And then I had like all these flashbacks, like just memories popping up in my head. All the depression I had all my life, the bulimia, the binge eating, the anorexia, like hurting myself, hating myself. Um, all those times that I thought about wanting to die and just, even when I was happy, I'm like, I would just be driving and it would be like, what if you just crash your car into that? Then I'd be in the kitchen, what if you just took that knife? Like, all the time, these thoughts. And I'm like, even when I was happy, I'm like, why do I have these thoughts? And just more than that, there is so much that has happened in my life. Um, the witchcraft. Um, just all these negative thoughts, all this doubt. And then it all came to me and I'm like, that is why. It makes sense that I have lots of demons around me. It made sense. Even though, like, an hour ago, none of this was real. Like, none of, like, it was hard for me to even be like, wow, this is really real. And so she came over to me, and she started doing this with her hands over my body. And I was like, what are you doing? And all of a sudden, my arms smacked together, my legs smacked together, and I couldn't move. I couldn't move. I was freaking out. I didn't think to pray. I was stuck, and all I could say, her daughter was there, and I'm like, I can't move. I can't move. And that, I just kept repeating it over and over again, and I was so freaked out. And I felt everything on me squeezing, like arms are squeezing my body, and I felt my insides cramping and everything squeezing together. And it felt like I was being squeezed to death, like every part of me being squeezed. Something interesting came to mind. A couple days before this happened, I read parts of the Quran about how Muhammad became a prophet. And this hit me. When Muhammad, Muhammad was going to kill himself and going up a mountain, and then it said the angel Gabriel came to him. Yet in the Bible, all the angels have the glory of God and all the light is shining out. Yet, in the Quran it says nothing about light coming off this angel. In the Bible it also says that Satan and demons can pretend to be angels of light, but they don't have the light of God. So, I thought that was interesting. And then, he said, so Muhammad, you're a prophet of God. And he said, read this, and Muhammad couldn't read. 
So then it said the angel came upon him, wrapped his arms around him, squeezed him, and it felt like death was upon him. And then he said, Muhammad, read the, the paper or whatever, and he still couldn't read it. And it said two more times the angel came upon him, and it felt like death was upon him, and he was being squeezed to death. And that moment in the barn, that's what it felt like. I said before in the last movie what the Holy Spirit felt like, the tingling going through my body, the peace, the happiness, the joy. I felt the tingling, just like with the Holy Spirit, but it was different. It was like fear. I felt like I had to run away. I felt like I had to hide. I felt I felt so scared, and I, I was just freaking out, and I couldn't believe it was happening. I'm like, am I being possessed, or why can't I move? Why can't I move? Nothing is holding me down. And then all of a sudden, she went to my back, and I went flying forward, and then I could move, and I kept, like, going like this, like, ugh, and, um, she said, I blessed you, and now you shall, f you should feel good, you should feel free, like, free from the demons. Now, there's something in the Bible that says you can't divide a house by the same house, so you can't use a demon to divide a demon, and it hit me that that was a demon on me, um, causing that. And it was like a physical happening instead of just like a mental or oppressive negative energy just causing like depression and like bad feelings. Like that was literally holding me down and it just freaked me out. I told my parents when I got home and they were not happy. <laughs> they were not happy. None of this kind of stuff has ever happened to them so it was really hard for them to believe all this as well. And, I don't know, I don't know, but it was scary, and so, of course, I call my ex-boyfriend, tell him everything, and I sound like a blubbering idiot, <laughs> so he probably thinks that I just lost my mind or something, but I was just so freaked out in the moment, because that doesn't happen on a normal day, that is not normal, that is not normal, so that is what happened at the barn, and more stuff has happened since demonic and non-demonic. I would say out of all the stories that I have, most of them are good. They're not all bad. And even though this was creepy and it wasn't something that's really great, um, it actually is a blessing because now when all these miracles happen to me and I try to rationalize, I can go back to that moment at the barn and I can be like, no, this is real. This is real. Hell is real. Heaven is real. It's true, and you can hear what I say, and you can rationalize it and be like, it's this, it's that, but it's not, your smarts are not necessarily what are going to get you to the truth. Yes, you need knowledge, but it's knowledge from God. He needs to give it to you. He needs to show you. He needs to give you the faith. If you want to know that God is real, you just need to ask him. Because I'm starting to realize how much he loves us. Like, more than we could have ever imagined. So anyway, that's my story for today. And I have more to come. I'm starting a new channel. Um, I think I'm calling it My Awesome God. Or something like that. So that this channel is going to be mostly about horses. So from now on, these videos, I'm going to switch over to my new channel. And I can give a link so that you guys are able to get to the other channel if you want to.